What's up guys, CB Mod here back with another video. Now a little while back I made a video about maintaining your PC software and after releasing that video I got a number of questions of people asking me, well sure I can now maintain the software but what exactly do I need to do to keep my computer running smoothly and well throughout the life of the system? So today we're going to show you, well exactly that, how to maintain and service your laptop PC. Now today's processes are more specifically aimed at laptops and also to PCs in general, however the ideas and concepts we do talk about can be definitely applied to other systems. However, I will have other videos coming down the line about those other systems. But today, we'll be going into, well, what exactly we need to do to make your system run just like new. Now for me, I run the Dell XPS 15 and despite it being quite banged up and quite a heavy life that it does live, it still runs just as good as it did on the day that I did buy it, thanks to the maintenance that I've been doing and the fact that it is somewhat looked after. Now I've gone ahead and broken up these tips into different stages. We have things like weekly, monthly, every six months, and also to every year. The things that we need to do are very, very basic and very simple, and just about anybody could probably do these things as long as they have some basic tools like a microfiber cloth and a small screwdriver set to work on their system. If you're not necessarily comfortable with working on your system like this, taking it to a PC shop or finding someone that's a little bit more tech savvy is definitely a good option. But with that being said, let's jump jump into the first things that we need to do and that is something you should do every single week. And the first thing is just wipe your system down. Removing the skin oils and whatever else may come in contact with your system is one of the best ways of keeping it running well. Now it doesn't necessarily affect performance but if you have a really grubby and dirty laptop it's really not going to give you the best laptop experience. So keeping it clean is definitely one thing you need to do. Using a simple microfiber cloth and some warm water is the best way to clean it. Try not to use any detergents or solvents or soaps or anything like that as it can eat the plastics and materials that your laptops are made of. So just simply wiping it down is the first thing that you need to do every single week. The second thing is just doing a virus scan. Whether you use the inbuilt Windows Defender or you go ahead and download a third party software, doing some sort of virus scan is also too another good way of keeping your system running well. The reason why we want to do it every single week is so it doesn't start doing a virus scan in the middle of something that you're trying to do, maybe on the go and on battery and all of a sudden it starts doing a virus scan, that's the last thing that you want to have happen. So having a virus scan being done at the exact same time every single week is a good way of one, making sure your system is running okay, but also two, two, making sure it doesn't randomly do a scan halfway through another thing you may be doing. And number three is a system backup. Backing up your system whilst again won't necessarily help it perform well, but it also too helps if something goes wrong, you can easily pull back a file or back up a system or restore a system rather and it is just a really good practice. And that's all you need to do every single week. Clean it, do a virus scan and back up your files. Doing this every single week should definitely help keep your system running smoothly. And if you do it every single week, it shouldn't take any more than sort of 10 or so minutes to actually do, which isn't a half bad trade-off. After that, let's move into the every month category. Every single month you should do these kind of things, and that's first if you have a Windows 10 PC, turn it on, put it in high performance mode, make sure it's plugged in, and let the laptop sit there. After about 5 or 10 minutes, you'll actually notice that the fans start to spin up, and if you have Task Manager open, you'll actually notice notice that the processors in the CPU start to just max out. Now, from what I understand, the system's starting to do indexes and background tasks that it won't be doing when it's on power saver mode or in general day-to-day -day activities. The benefit of doing this is it actually helps the PC to stay snappy and responsive as it's able to do all its Windows 10 background doodads without too many issues. I personally found that allowing my system to go ahead and do this actually really did help. Now, if you are running a Mac, a desktop, or something else other than Windows 10, this step doesn't really apply to you too much as well those systems don't necessarily suffer from it. A Windows 10 desktop is well a desktop and doesn't have power constraints like a laptop does so it's going to be doing its indexing and background tasks anyway so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but at the end of the day if you are running a laptop with Windows 10 one of the best things you can do is set it to high performance and let it sit there. Another thing you should consider doing every single month is removing junk and temporary files. Don't do this through a piece of software, do it actually manually. The benefit of doing it manually is you know what you're deleting and you know what is junk or temporary files that you don't really need. If you have a folder on your desktop that you're really not using what's in there, remove it or 
or back it up to an external drive and then delete it off your system. One thing that people don't actually know is if your system is full, it actually will slow down. SSDs will slow down at about that 80 to 90% fill rate and also to hard drives will slow down as well the more that they fill up. So the emptier you drive, the better performance you are going to be seeing. And the final thing you should do every single month is jump into Task Manager and make sure there's nothing out of place. If your system is idling like mine is here today and just sitting here on power saver mode, make sure you're not going any more over than 5% CPU, make sure nothing's spiking and also to make sure your uh, processors are all running as usual. You'll definitely know if something's off if your CPU's maxing out and you're not really doing anything with the system or if something looks out of place. And overall, just like every single week, this should take no more than sort of 10 to 15 minutes to do and is a fairly simple thing. Removing the junk files, letting your system index is again another great way of keeping the system snappy and responsive when it does come down to it. Then moving on to every six months. These are two things that you should do every six months to keep your system again running fairly smooth. The first thing is check your startup items and remove anything that's unnecessary. After a certain amount of time you're going to be installing applications and a lot of them will have startup items and the best thing to do is disable them to keep your startup times down. Jump into Task Manager and going over to the startup tab in Windows 8 and also 2.10 is the best way to go ahead and manage this. Once again, I'm really not a big fan of software that adds onto your computer that does this because Task Manager and a lot of built-in applications with Windows allows you to manage this. So installing third-party applications is really just going to be slowing down your system and not doing you any good. If you don't think you need it and it's not made by a big reputable company, probably disable it from your startup and you should be pretty much good to go. Do a restart, make sure your system is all good and boots exactly how you want it. If something's a little bit odd or something didn't load up that you were expecting to load up, go back to the task manager and make sure it is enabled. The second thing you want to do every six months is do a disk defrag or execute the trim command if you are running an SSD. Just like keeping the drive relatively empty, making sure it's optimized is another way to go ahead and do so. The inbuilt Windows tool to go ahead and do this is pretty good and gets the job done just fine. And again, especially with an SSD, maintaining it and doing the trim command can definitely improve some performance, but more importantly, it will definitely help with longevity and the life of the drive. Then finally, every year, three things that you need to do every year to keep your system running the best. First off is a little bit more technical, and that is open up the system and blow out any dust. We've done a number of videos and they should have popped up here about cleaning your system, but making sure the dust is no longer in the heat sinks and inside the system is the best way to do so. Try not to use brushes or vacuums, use things like compressed air or cans of compressed air is the best way to get dust out of your system. The reason why you want to get all the dust out is because it acts as an insulator. So it basically traps all the heat inside your system, causing it to run hot, causing the fans to kick up and potentially making your system run slower. So keeping it clean is one of the best options. On a laptop like the Dell XPS 15 and a lot of uh, laptops out there, you just have to undo all the bottom screws, the bottom plate comes off and you are into the system. Now there are a number of systems also too that are more clam style designed where you take the screws out from the bottom and the keyboard deck area actually lifts up and off the system. So if you want an instructional guide on how to pull apart your computer, check out YouTube and a few other websites that I'll have linked down below as there is definitely a special process to pull apart certain computers. If you're a little bit more tech savvy and have pulled apart many computers, you're probably okay here. But if you haven't pulled apart many, try and consult a teardown guide so you can actually remove your system and get it apart without actually breaking it. Once we've gone ahead and cleaned out all the dust inside the system, we're also too gonna want to reinstall the operating system. This is definitely one of the best ways to keep your system running smooth as basically reinstalling the operating system gets rid of anything you may have missed in the six month cleanup and also too just keeps your system running smoothly because things aren't building up at all. Personally I do this on my laptop and also too over on my desktop every year and I haven't had a problem there. Also too it can remove viruses that your scanners may have missed because you're basically writing over everything. Now with that being said if you don't want to actually go ahead and reinstall the operating system, maybe you don't have time, maybe you're really not into that kind of stuff, going ahead and basically deleting everything out of your system and also to basically doing the deepest scan you can with a virus scanner is going to be the best alternative to actually reinstalling Windows. Personally, I do prefer to reinstall Windows, but at the end of the day, I do understand that not everybody has sort of the ability to go ahead and do so. So there we go, that is all your scheduled service type of maintenance for your computer. Every week, every month, month, every six months, and also to every year, and doing this should keep your system running really, really well. This system right here is getting on to almost three years at this point, and honestly, 
doesn't even feel a day over a month old. It's still snappy, fast and responsive and again, almost feels like the day that I got it out of the box. Sure, there may be a few fingerprints here and there because I haven't wiped it down for this week, but at the end of the day, it is not that bad. Now, with that being said, there are a few things you want to avoid when working on your system. The first thing is do not install any programs that claim to boost the registry or help performance and that kind of stuff. At the end of the day, you're installing a piece of software which is going to be running, theoretically slowing things down. The best thing you can do is uninstall as much as possible and do as many things as you can manually because you're not relying on weird programs and a lot of those kind of cleaner programs are not always written the best and don't always optimize your system the best. They may say they're optimizing it, but at the end of the day, they may be doing more harm than good. Also too, on the topic of cleaning, try not to use any solvents or cleaners when working on your computer. I did touch on this earlier, but don't use things like Windex or soap or any kind of cleaner because things like Windex will actually eat touch screens and the matte coating on matte displays. And also to other cleaners can actually eat the plastics that your systems are made of. So the last thing you want to do is be trying to clean your computer and actually damaging it by using solvents and cleaners that will eat your or display and also to computer. Unfortunately, I've seen this many times like this image right here where someone's used Windex on a display and it's basically eaten the coating off the top of it. It's really unfortunate and can do some real damage to your system. Whilst there are definitely cleaners out there on the market that claim not to damage your system, at the end of the day, most of us have access to hot water. So just get some warm water and a microfiber cloth and that's the best thing you can do. And the final thing to avoid is using a vacuum. Vacuums and computers do not mix. It is said over and over and over, but when it comes to static electricity, vacuums are a massive static magnet and putting a static charge on the computer will basically kill it very, very fast. So do not use a vacuum, even if they're claiming to be static safe and all that kind of stuff. At the end of the day, it just isn't worth it. But there we go. That is my sort of PC service maintenance schedule for laptop computers. Do let me know down in that comment section if you do something else or if you would like to add something to the service list because there's definitely a lot of things you could do. But honestly, doing these tips that I did talk about here today should keep your PC running for a very, very, very long time. Nevertheless, guys, thanks for watching and I will catch you all in the next one.